Hi everyone, I hope you're well. So our collab this evening is going to be focusing on certain aspects of your part. I know that it is still only beginning of April, but it is important to start thinking about where the different aspects of the theory need to be put into application. So I wanted to draw your attention to um, three particular pages of the textbook. Um, just looking at how these work in terms of the part. I'm obviously going to do the NSS in full, but for tonight, I just wanted to focus on three specific areas that are important and that are going to help you uh, when you are prepping for your part, uh, when you are thinking about what um, areas you need to focus on and what areas are actually going to be uh, usable when it comes to your part. So like I said, this isn't our NSS. This is just me um, breaking it down in a little bit more detail for you. So as I've explained before, the focus is on Pringles and it's the launch of these three new flavors, that being seaweed, soft shell crab and uh, grilled shrimp. So if you are thinking about these three flavors, what you need to consider is when you think of these flavors, what um, uh, what comes to mind? Do you think of uh, the beach and um, open waters? Do you think of Asian cuisine? What comes to mind for you that makes you think of um, these particular flavors? And that is what's going to guide you through your part and through your PRE. So some students take on the C vibe. Other students that I've had have taken on the Asian perspective with, um, you know, doing, uh, proposing ideas to do with, um, you know, sushi and more Asian um, orientated uh, food. But you can choose either perspective, both work. But the idea is that your campaign, your work that you do, these internal emails, these um, external emails, infographics, everything that you make, need to center around Pringles as a company, but also need to focus around these new flavors. So when you're designing your work, because you are going to be doing some, you know, um, more visual design aspects, what you also need to think about are your color profiles, looking at these greens, pale pinks, pale blues, and incorporating those um, different colors as well as the graphics into the work that you're producing. And you need to think of that from the beginning, from your part, as well as into your POE, because there needs to be consistency throughout. And the things that you establish for your part, you can then reuse for your POE as well. So you need to be um, looking at software such as Canva that gives you some freedom without paying. Um, you can do some of this in uh, Word, uh, but most students have found Canva to be the most useful because there's the right graphics, access to colors, and you know they've found it easy to use and gives you a bit of freedom, which a lot of the other softwares don't do because you have to pay for um, the privilege of using them. So what I would just want to speak to tonight is um, section, well, I'm going to speak to little aspects of each of the sections, but also just to line it up with the textbook and so you just know where you are looking for these different um, sections and what is important. So the first section, again, I'm not going into the details tonight, that's for the NSS, but the first section, what I need you to be aware of is that it speaks to you launching an internal memo that is going out to the staff of Pringles to um, tell them that this new, these new flavors are going to be launched. Now, what's important with this particular question is first making sure you have the correct memo structure and then also thinking about what you've learned in terms of internal communication. So in terms of, you know, how you communicate with others within a company. So you need to think about um, your tone, your style, the manner in which you address these people, 
Remember that they will have some prior knowledge because they should be employees of Pringles or they are employees of Pringles. So they should know the product already. And when you're launching something internally, you are expecting a level of knowledge, understanding, but also there will be a slight level of um, informalness to it in that it is going to colleagues rather than going out. And it's not about promoting in such a way that is um, trying to entice people in, but more to give them experience and knowledge into what is um, being released and what's new and more getting the employees hyped up for new things that are coming, but just to be more brand positive and, and aware of what's going on with their own company. So the first, this memo you're going to be sending out the whole idea with the memo and what's um, important with this is that you're setting the scene. You are laying the foundation for um, what you're going to do for the rest of your uh, part and your POE and that this is the email going out to your the employees of Pringles. You can choose, well, you have to choose a particular province um, and location because you're setting out this email and it's to get them to engage and know what's going on. And you can do that through, um, you know, uh, chip tastings or if hampers are going out to every employee or there's a lunch being held, you're going to be making up these facts in the email to get people to need to know about um, these new chips being launched. Like I said, I'm going to go into more details about this in our NSS, but I just want you to think about your formatting. So you are not going to be actually sending out an email, but you're going to be writing it in an email format. So this means you are going to have a to, from, and the subject line. So that two is obviously two employees at Pringles or, um, you know, a certain department within Pringles or whatever it may be. So it's going to Pringles and it's important that in your email address that the people you're sending it to uh, has got Pringles as the um, company name as well as the email that you are sending out because you are acting in that department. Again, we'll go through those finer details in our NSS. Remember with your subject line, it's go, got to be informative, but short and simple and to the point, but also needs to speak directly to what you are um, talking about in your email. So launch of new flavors, um, invitation to taste new flavors, whatever it may be, that subject has got to relate directly to your actual um, event that you're planning. Then you don't need to have your, you, you're you not going to have that little information the pop where it's at the top where it says you wrote and so on. You're just going to start off with dear um, Pringles employees or dear Pringles team or something like that. That first paragraph there has got to give you give the reader context into what the email is about. So um, I'm really excited to be telling you guys that there's this new Pringles, these new Pringle flavors being launched, and you give a little background, a little bit of information as to, you know, the new flavors, um, what the aim is, that kind of thing. Then you need to give um, the context into the launch or the way in which the the sorry Pringles employees will be interacting with um, the new flavors. So you get to choose that and make that up. All those details you need to list off in this email. And then you need to have a closing where your um, reader, you know, something that sparks things saying, you know, really excited for you guys to be there or please RSVP so we know for numbers or, um, you know, please feel free, free to share these new flavors with friends and that and give us your feedback or whatever it may be. Then you've got to have um, a closing off. So kind regards, best wishes, that kind of thing, your name. And underneath that, you have to have your email signature where it's got your title, your contact details and all that information. So this Screenshot is taken from page 237 uh, of the textbook where it speaks to email, emails and email formatting. But I just want you to be aware that in the brief of the part, it does say um, a memo, but a memo, another name for the memo is an email. Okay, so that's the first thing that I want you to be aware of. Okay, so going back to the part, in our 
previous collab, I spoke to the audience profile, which is section, oh, sorry, Ella, I'm getting my questions confused between B and C. So B is actually where you guys are going to be creating an infographic that speaks to two topics, adapting to different business cultures, which we've covered in a previous lecture, as well as how to improve intercultural communication skills. So here it says, use something like Canva, as I've explained previously. So I've just got this the screenshot of the infographic that you're gonna be drawing from. Now, you can use this on page 124, um, and you are able to use this as um, the effective communication across cultures, um, and also then you can bring in the how to improve. But this is the basis of this question. This is um, not an infographic, obviously, but this is a summary of the content in the form of a, an illustration. But you'll take the information of this, expand upon it, and explain to the audience um, within this infographic how to, um, just going back to the question, just a reminder, this is page 124 of the textbook. So you're using this as the foundation, but you obviously have to expand upon these things. So um, enhancing your sensitivity to cultural diversity and improving your intercultural communication. So how they've worded it here is adapting to different business cultures and then the intercultural communication. So what you're going to be doing is taking those key points that they have there in the, and then putting it into an infographic. Again, in the NSS, I'll show you how to... Um, how a good infographic looks and what have you. And then what you can do is the points that they raise there, you then need to expand upon them. So you're going to be drawing from the textbook, but at the same time, you're going to be having your own content. I will speak to referencing and stuff in our NSS as well. So this one in particular, the section B is very visual. It's about not only the content, but how it's presented. So just make sure that when you're reading through the textbook, just pick out the key important information to do with business culture as well as intercultural communication and make sure you expand upon those. But it's also, again, about the presentation. Being an infographic, you can put it either onto one page or two across two pages in that you know long strip formatting. I'm very happy for you to do one page, which is the business culture, and one page, which is intercultural communication. Um, I've also had students that have done a bigger A4 page and made it look good. So it's just very dependent on your style of design, but as long as it looks good overall, as well as the content being present. All right. So in our last collab for section C, um, I spoke to this audience profile. So I'm not going to go through that again with you tonight. You can go back and listen to the previous recording. But to say to you guys what's important for this audience profile, you're not profiling the, per, the people that eat Pringles, the audience and that. You're profiling the Pringles employee. So this is something you're going to make up. Um, you are going to have a combination of theory where you state what is important in terms of identifying your primary audience. You're going to draw that from the textbook. So that'll be one sentence. The next sentence will be describing the primary audience um, as the Pringles employees going through your size and demographic, the, uh, geographic, sorry, distribution. Hence why I said you're also going to be choosing a specific location, the audience composition. So you'll go through each of these by giving me theory, then follow that up by made up application where you are going to give me insight into what you think the um, Pringles employees would be like. So it's important to make sure that when you're doing this, you think about the employees and not those who are actually receiving the Pringles out in the real world. Okay, so that's super important for section B. That's the one thing I want you to be aware of if you start prepping that. Okay. Then lastly, section D, and again, I spoke to this in our last collab where I spoke to the three-step planning process, where it's plan, um, uh, where you draft it, you're going to be um, presenting a second, uh, first version, which is full of mistakes deliberately, and then you'll give me the final edited process. So if we have a look at, um, so it, sorry, it's the brainstorming, the one full of flaws, and then the final edited one. So if we have a look here, what I just wanted to show you is a way in which you can show these edits. So actually, let me go back to the part just to um, 
just show you where these sections all work together. Sorry, I'm jumping a, jumping the gun here. Okay, so if you have a look, the first thing that you are going to do here is you're going to do a mind map, all right, where you are going to plan out your pr planning process. So um, I spoke about this last in our last collab as well. Um, so you'll have a central idea and then all the ideas that you could possibly come up with for the given scenario. Again, I'm going to go through that in our NSS, but just to show you, you first have this mind map. All right, then you're going to have your first draft, okay, where it's going to be full of the mistakes and you're going to show the markups and I'm going to show you the markup process now. And then what you're going to do is you're going to complete the message. So then you're going to write it out in an edited format. So all the things that you've picked up in your first draft, you're going to fix all those things and actually edit it. I know it might irk some of you to actually put something in deliberately with errors, but it is part of the process and you will get to fix those errors. So this is what they mean by mark markups. So just to show you. So there's two ways that you guys are able to go about it in a digital format where you can highlight the section that's wrong, right click it in Word and go comment and you can comment and you can say replace this with this spelling error, fix this and you can give me little comment boxes and then as long as you save it as a PDF with markups, then I'll be able to see all those comments. So just make sure that when you upload it for VC Learn um, for your final submission that I'm actually able to see those comments. The other way to do it is like this where you do it by hand where you will circle things being wrong, put in um, your corrections, say where you've spelled things wrong, say where you're missing words, and you can do this either in a PDF editor where you can write, you can actually do it in Word with the draw tool where you can circle things and do all that, or you can print it out, do it by hand, and scan it and put it back. So you can scan using your phone or a scanner if you have one. So those are the ways that you can show the markups. But the whole idea is that the more errors that I see, the more scratches, the more comments and all that, the more I can see that you are thinking about the editing process. And then I see that final draft. And then I compare the edits, um, the, the first draft with the second draft to see if all the things you've commented actually um, are present in your final so why it's important to see this is that for a lot of students they say but I don't understand how you're going to show things so this is how you do it do it in a write in a different color um, use a highlighter use the comment boxes anywhere that I can see the errors that they're very visible that there are many of them and then the edited version should be all cleaned up and nice okay so those are the important things that and sorry this is page 201. So that these are the important aspects for section D. So as I've gone through tonight is section A, B, C, and D. Those are the four sections of your part. Like I said, I'm going to go through it in fine detail um, during your NSS. But for now, I just want you to be aware of the sections in the textbook, what kind of things I'm looking for. And oh, the one thing I didn't mention, guys, with that infographic, please just make sure you think about the Pringles colors. Um, and make sure that you follow uh, those Pringle colors, make sure the Pringles logo is present. And then if you choose to, you can. A lot of students go and use um, the colors of the new launch within their infographic. You don't have to. As long as the Pringles logo and Pringles colors are present, that is acceptable, but it's got to fit in within the Pringles company branding because this is a, an infographic that would be going out to the employees of Pringles. So that is very important to remember to ensure that you have consistency and then it's stuff, that kind of thing will follow through in your POE as well. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a little guidance before our NSS and I will chat to you guys soon. Bye guys.